Welcome back to Post Tonight on Channels Television. We are taking a look at season 10 of the Channels International Kids Club. We're set uh, more than ready for the Lagos preliminaries because the draw ceremony has been concluded. We had the kids around today. They were part of the process of uh, picking the draw and they were excited to, you know, meet friends from other schools right there. The Channels Kids Club winning once again because that's part of the objective to get kids from different parts of the country and then promote national integration. We're winning with that one and we love it. Let's once again let you know that this is, yes, it's at the grassroots and it involves kids, but they're taking it really seriously. Alfred, you'll see pictures of Greenhaven Montessori when they were preparing. No, this is no joke. They've been preparing three times a week. Come to school, change to their training kits, and then they come out for the drills. Alfred, it's so heartwarming for me because at this level, these kids know that success will not just happen, that you need to prepare for it. And that's so sweet. Beyond um, all of the camaraderie that comes with training together and learning um, football skills, you know, working as a team, working together, these guys developing themselves, not only mentally, mm. but physically. I mean, these are stories. When you see things like this, fast forward 10 years down the line, now you look at these things. Seven year old, eight year old, now 18, now 19, right enough to play for one of them. Um the age group, um, uh, age level uh, yeah. teams, I just you know all of the hard work, all of the good work. I mean, the problem with us has always been that of having a structured way of developing our players. A lot of things happen by chance for, for, for us. Um, you know, Lukusa is one of the you know, um, <laughs> it's the leading scorer in the Nigerian Premier League. Today. I want, I had a chat with him. I said, he said, he said no, it was the younger brother actually introduced him to organize football, playing for a club mm. that his own is just go to the street and play. And in Ajigule, that's how you just uh, develop this. So we just have to find a more structured way. Yeah. We see the likes of Iniesta, Lano, Messi. These are, they were seven year old, eight year old, nine year old. And, at, and you could at, have seen from that, at that level, you yeah. see what they will become. And you just, you know, model them and get the best out of them. So Alfred, because, I mean, it, it is awesome. at this level, we just kick balls around when we were kids. Um, no competitions to prepare for. Who gave particularly, you, who gave you Jesse? <laughs> particularly when you're in school. <laughs> so these guys have what to prepare for, and they come out with that objective in mind. Last year, Greenhaven, they won one match and lost one of their penalties. They said this time around that they are ready, that they want to do something different. But I don't know after when they saw the draw. I don't know if they're still that confident, but, but we like, we love what we see. I want to encourage every other kid out there um, to be part of this. But hey, we, we said it at the draw ceremony that you must also be doing well in class. Yes, because this is football and education. So as, as long as you want to play football, you should also be leading in class. Because some games master will say, if you're not among the top three or five, you cannot make it stay. And that's very important, Alfred, because we're trying to also teach them that there's a time when you can no longer kick football, but your brain will still be active. What education does for you is to uh, you know, give you access, open doors for you, uh, give you endless possibilities to really uh, be able to apply yourself in different areas. And that, combining that with football, something that it says for a lot of people, for us Nigerians, it comes, at, it comes naturally. We just believe that once you are born, naturally you will have the skills, the endowments to play football. Mm. I, I mean, I, I mean, just marrying both of them. And, and uh, examples abound of players who did very well on the field and did well in, did very well in the classroom, did well in the academics, yeah. and today they are better for it. I told the kids at the draft ceremony that Vladimir Klitschko is a PhD holder and he's been a world heavyweight boxing champion for a very long time. His education also kept him going. So that's it. I uh, will continue to monitor everything that is going down at the Lagos preliminaries for the Channels International Kids Cup. Uh, action will commence on Monday, on Monday, May the 7th. Put that down. That's information that you can use. Uh, whether your school is participating or not, if you've got the time, is Sherry Mini Stadium and Campus Square Mini Stadium the best of grassroots football is about to go down. Join us as we discover young talents for the country. Let's get out of this now and get into the World Cup vibes. We'll be right back. Good to know you're still with us. It's 40 days to the World Cup. 
four zero days to the World Cup. Alfred, we started this countdown when it was 100 days to go. It's now 40 days to go. Uh, at, at this point, if you had fever, you should have recovered. And now, the expectation level will be mega high. The World Cup is upon us. Um, a lot of uh, a, a lot of um, the players that are playing for their different clubs in uh, various leagues. Some of them are already in holiday mood. Uh, the games that will be played in the next few days, except for those who are either looking for uh, for perhaps maybe finishing, uh, not going on relegation, or maybe looking for better classification in the league. It's uh, everybody on their own in holiday mood because of the World Cup. And for some players, this is when if inj this is when injury kicks in, it becomes a very very difficult situation. You find yourself in a very very difficult situation. The French national team, for example, uh, Kucheni only yesterday. Yeah. Uh, for playing for Arsenal, wow. caught an injury, wow. and wow. it means it's, uh, the way it is, it's setting, World Cup. It's setting mm. that uh, Set it? it's almost setting that uh, if you miss uh, six weeks from now, how many how many weeks is the uh, World Cup? If you're out for six weeks, uh, six uh, weeks, uh, how many more days you have in the World Cup? So it's that difficult uh, for know, players now, and everybody will be very, very careful. Yeah, with Fred Indidi. Uh, it is too. Uh, there are question. There are question. And for me, that is one player. Is a monster in our midfield. Is one player mm. that it's almost um, we 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 will say indispensable for us now uh, because um, in time past used to be on Nazi that you know filled that role. But when he came quietly, was doing he was doing the business for club and country. Young player of uh, the year for Leicester City for two seasons back to back. And this was a player that played amateur football from Nigeria. Went to Belgium and in this, he's turning out and he's one of the most sought after, um, uh, you know, in that role, sought after players in uh, in England in that role. And, and so, missing him, missing him in the World Cup, we just pray it doesn't, I just don't want to contemplate mm. it. Um, mm. it, will, it will be a massive loss. That's right, the Super Eagles of Nigeria, they are preparing big time uh, for the World Cup and it will be good to have all the players, the core members of the team to be available for that former Super Eagles captain Joseph Yobo also played at the World Cup and he understands what it means to feature at the World Cup. He believes that this current crop of Super Eagles players can do well at the World Cup. But he says, hey guys, let's not put them under pressure. Let's listen to Joseph Yobo we'll be right back. Great expectation, but no pressure on the team, no pressure. This is a very relatively a young team, very good players, very good groups. I think they're going to do well. I hope they surprise everybody and shock the world. That's, that's what I hope for. This is not the first time we're going to the World Cup. But this bunch of players, and most of them, uh, is going to be their first World Cup. So I think they'll get out of the group. They'll get to quarterfinals, even semifinals. That's the thing. When you get out of the group, the confidence grows. And you see this young group of players, you know, playing with a lot of confidence, you know. So they're playing in the big leagues, though the World Cup is relatively new to a few of them. So when I played my first World Cup, I was fearless. So if they're going to this World Cup, the young ones, and be fearless, then great things is going to happen to this country. So that's it. Uh, just have you were making a very important point and passing a message to the fans. Are you part of those fans that say they, they should go beyond the knockout phase, get to the quarterfinal, and if possible, get to the semis. Are you part of those fans that are not being realistic? Alfred, he says, look, this is a good team, but hey, no pressure. That's the, that's the most important thing. For me, I keep, I keep telling people, if you, if you concentrate so much on the result, you mix, you miss the experience of, you know, having yeah. maximum feel yeah. of what this World Cup is. It's an experience. I mean, there are 32 countries going to the Mundial, and Nigeria happens to be one of them. The Cameroonians will be wishing they are in, 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 the, in the shoes of Nigeria. Ghana will be, the Ghanaians will be saying, hey, why are we not Nigerians so as to enjoy this experience? It's an experience. I mean, we should just take full advantage of this. every other thing Alfred, that comes out of this. I mean, somebody is somewhere watching you now. Alfred ah, Fred is saying his own. The Nigerian fan just <laughs> wants you to win. Are you speaking to the fans under that bridge at the Kenya or the ones in Kaduna? The, the, the all the loyal Super Eagles fans has been saying, look, we must make an impact on the this The most important thing for me is effort. Mm. If these guys go out there, give a good account of themselves, play to their strength. If win or lose, whatever mm. happens, 
I mean, this is football. Yeah. We, we will feel very disappointed if we just feel if we feel that these guys went to the field of play and didn't put in hmm. a good shift. Hmm. But where they put in a good shift and pass well, maybe other yeah, other great. factors, you know, yeah. we will stand up and clap for them. I, and I, I mean, so for us, yeah. so for me personally, effort is everything. Yeah, but you go see, out there, give your very best, yeah. and 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 whatever. The Nigerian football out. fan is peculiar. Just in case you don't know him, let me tell you about him. Yes, to an extent, we agree with what you're saying. It, it, it gave a, a round of applause to the team in 1994. You, you just described what they did. They played well. They showed fight, showed hunger, and got beaten. And we said, well done. They did well. In 1998, the team also did relatively well. But because they lost the way they did to Denmark, some persons were like... This is not as super good. So yes, I understand where Joseph Yobo is coming from and what you are also saying, but um, the fans, they, they just want to see good football. But they just want, lost they want to keep bragging rights. We lost against them, Denmark. Did yeah. we leave it all on the field of play? Was that the best performance of the team? Was that team mentally prepared uh, for, 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 for but that But when game? you defeated Spain, everybody danced with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Nigerian football fan right there. Effort, well, effort is everything. <laughs> so we'll continue, we'll continue to count down to the World Cup. The World Cup will really get us talking. And we will keep talking about the World Cup even when it comes and goes. Uh, it takes at least uh, three days of, of filing, polishing, electro, electro plating, heating and decorating for workers in Southeast China to turn pieces of zinc alloy into products resembling the biggest prize in food Football, the FIFA World Cup trophy. So they're saying, okay, you will not get to play and win it, but we will give you these replicas to keep. The factory is in the process of manufacturing tens of thousands of replica World Cup trophies and other World Cup souvenirs, including badges and key rings for fans all over the world. The company predicts 10% increase in sales of its FIFA souvenir products compared to 2014, with around a quarter of those sales expected in the China region. Alfred, we will see all sorts before the World Cup comes. Uh, but this right there is just to pump up the FIFA, let you know that the World Cup is near. I mean, if you have one of these um, collectors, I tell you, I think that these are things, you know, the industry around, around football. Um, the football is being played in Russia. FIFA, you know, the marketing team of FIFA, all around the world, these... I mean, these are registered souvenirs, produce them, and everybody just want to keep this as a moment. Mm. Uh, you go to the world. Uh, uh, the thing about football is, by the time you put the structures right and you, you know, so program the market that people want to spend money. Mm. When they come there, it's an experience. They come there, they know that for the next four years, hey, this kind of situation will not find itself. Maybe on another environment or another experience, but for this one, let's just soak it up all in. And um, it's good business for, for, for the money for FIFA, money for the people who are ma manufacturing. And of course, all around. The, the, the money goes round. Mm, that's right. So, but it's, it's all about the World Cup. Uh, see, football fans are already, you know, taking a look at it. So, oh, well, it'll be good to keep this. Yes, um, the 2018 for World Cup replica. I'll just keep it at home and just say, well, uh, Americans will also like to buy this. They're missing out of the World Cup. Ghanaians will buy it too. <laughs> they have football fans, you know, because any sale of this it just it makes you feel. No, you know, you won't get to feel it now if you're missing out of the World Cup. Mm -hmm. See you about a week to when it starts. No, well, no, the moment it kicks off and everybody, the attention of the world is drawn to the World Cup. Whatever yeah, you are, yeah. if you are an African, okay, five Africans is going to work. The rest of Africa will have to pitch, look for where they will pitch their tent. Are they going to support Nigeria, support, uh, uh, support Senegal, Egypt, Morocco, or who? And, uh, I mean, at that point, if you're a player, mm -hmm. you're not playing in the, at the World Cup and you see your teammates. Oh. When the national anthem is being sung, oh, not your country's national yeah, anthem. No. You just listen to that and that feeling, you know, that you feeling know. of hey. For some people, it just make them resolve that hey, the next time this not it's this, not going this to happen. Not gonna happen. It's not going to pass know. me. I know, Alfred. I must say thank you so much for that. So, let's go out of the World Cup vibes now. When we come back, we'll talk about the NPFL. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> 